hey, you want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. <laughs> anyway, so I'm running out of I'm running out of good Arnold quotes, but not running out of great talk about the Pixel 6a. And I think now is a good time to talk about it again because we just had the recent video. We had the recent uh, epiphany from the MKBHD camera survey on selecting the Pixel 6a as the best overall camera smartphone camera of the year, which is good. I mean, it's a fantastic camera. I made a video about it talking about how it's not the most complete camera, definitely by a stretch of the imagination because, well, you just got the primary camera and an ultra wide and you don't have the telephoto, you can't do macro stuff, it doesn't have the ability to zoom in really far, and the selfie camera's not the best in the world, so, but there's a lot of great stuff here. And especially if you were able to get this phone for $299 when it was on sale. Sadly, it's back pretty much at normal price. But the holiday sales are over, we made it through Black Friday, Thanksgiving, Cyber Monday, all that stuff. So hopefully anybody that wanted one got one at $299. Like, I'm sure there's probably gonna be some stragglers to the program now, it's getting a lot of publicity. And it's great that the phone's getting a lot of publicity because, well, it didn't have a lot of great publicity when it came out. And of course, when it came out, software update was delayed. The fingerprint sensor was having some issues. There were people reporting that, of course, you could unlock it with a fingerprint that wasn't registered. So it didn't have the greatest launch. And I really had hoped it would have a good launch because the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, we all know, had their problems. They had problems all year long. So I looked at the Pixel 6a, and I was like, okay, this is their opportunity for redemption. Like this right here will be the, the set the tone and then we'll get the Pixel 7. And it didn't quite happen that way. It wasn't as bad as it could have been, but it wasn't this, it wasn't as polished as I thought it should have been. So lots of that's basically been changed, especially as we got the subsequent updates, feature updates and things like that. The Pixel 6a is a fantastic phone. And it proves that maybe not always the newest is the best. And what I mean by that, talking about this camera, this camera is like five years old. A lot of folks may not know that. And that's not something that's really an advertising point because, well, Google sticks with the same camera for so long, they are continually upgrading it. There's two parts to the camera story, especially with Google. You have the hardware and then you have the software. So half of the picture process is what's done in post-processing whenever, whenever you take the picture. You take the photo and then all the machine learning, the AI, the algorithms, all the stuff that Google does behind the scenes, you take the picture and then bam, it looks so good. And that's the power of the Google Pixel camera. So even though this has been the same camera since the Pixel 2, Pixel 3, Pixel 4, Pixel 5, there you go, now we got the Pixel 6a. So fantastic stuff here. And I think it's got good battery life. I think it's got a nice screen. I think that it's nice in handheld size. This is something that a lot of folks don't want. Not everybody wants a big, gigantic 6.7, 6.8 inch phone. And this is about as small as it gets in the Android world, at least here in the US now, from most reputable brands. You take a look at OnePlus, you take a look at Sony, you take a look at Samsung, Google. This is pretty much it. So I love the form factor. I love that it still looks more like the Pixel 6 than the Pixel 7. The Pixel 7 is a beautiful looking phone, but I like the more less refined, less rounded approach, more, I just like the way that the Pixel 6 looks. I, I like the 6 and the 6 Pro. Of course, I do like the 7, but I think, for me personally, I like the way the 6 looks. So, the 6A, excellent phone. Hopefully, you got one while it was on sale, and I think it's the best value phone of the year. And I think whenever it originally came out, because it's got the Google Tensor chip in it, it's got the same chip that the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro have. And this phone originally launched at 449 which most people, I think, thought was a little high, and I think it's probably gonna be cost prohibitive for sales now that so many people have seen it and gotten it for $299. I think they should probably make the permanent price $299, maybe $349, but $299 would definitely move a lot of units. And it's gonna make it probably more difficult going into next year whenever, well, yeah, we're almost there. We're like a week away. The Pixel 7 day next year, I can't even, um, I can't even imagine how good it's gonna be once we get it with the Tensor G2 which will be crazy. The Tensor G2 is such a good chip. The Tensor, the original one, yeah, it's not as great when it comes to things like gaming and, and when the horsepower, it gets a little bit warmer, a little bit more inconsistencies there. They really tighten things up in the G2. But for $299 with the last year's Tensor flagship level chip and the tried and true Pixel camera and a nice handheld form factor and you get all the bells and whistles, three years of operating system updates, five years of security patches, it's just fantastic. And a lot of people really like it. 
The only two criticisms that I really have is one, the fingerprint sensor is not as good as the Pixel 7. Now, whenever this one first came out, yes, it, it was not the greatest in the world. There have been a couple patches since then, and I may be a little bit more forgiving at the $299 price point than the original Pixel 6 and 6 Pro that came out. But, I mean, it works. I, I don't really have any problems with it. It's definitely gotten better since it's come out. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty good fingerprint sensor. But it's not the best out there in the world. Again, much cheaper phone. And it doesn't have facial recognition. Never going to get it. And that's something that... Yeah, I wish that it had it. And this is the same criticism I had for the Pixel 6. It should have had facial recognition. Thankfully, Google learned their lesson with the Pixel 7. It at least has basic facial scanning. So you can do facial recognition with the Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro. I really hope we get it with the Pixel 7a. But I think most people looking at this phone, looking at the price tag, looking at the benefits, the benefits on the scale far outweigh the lack of benefits. Like the pros and the cons the list on the con side is very, very short when it comes to this phone. And you can, like I said, you do pretty much everything with it. You, you get all the great stuff with this phone. You get the magic eraser. Of course, you get the other stuff like the the call assistant that rejects and it and it blocks a lot of the a lot of the spam calls that you get. And you can also screen them, which is great too, because whenever they call, you just press a little button, you can screen it, you don't even have to talk to people. You get the translate, all that great stuff, the Google Smart Assistant. There's so much stuff on the software side that really makes a great case for this phone if you're looking to get one or you're looking to get a great phone that doesn't cost a lot of money. And I think, again, I think Google did a great job with it. I like the build quality. I think that it's really important that this does have the upgraded design. I was not a big fan of the previous build quality on the Pixel 5, Pixel 4, Pixel... I didn't like that whole plasticky feel to it. So this one definitely has the nicer premier, premium look to it. And I think it stands out more. And I think it looks like the other phones. And that's important because there's been kind of a, an upgrade in, in class and sophistication, I think, for the Google Pixel brand since the Pixel 6. They stand out more. I like the nice camera bar on the back. And some people don't like it. I like it because it's uniform. It goes all the way across the back. It's not just on one side. A lot of folks don't think about this, but if you place it down on a flat surface like a Samsung phone or an iPhone, they wobble. <laughs> if you try to touch on and use the phone while they're on the phone, if you don't have it on the table, if you have a case on it, it wobbles. So I, it's very functional. I like that too. I think it's, I think it sets in well and I think it's just a good phone. It's nice and fun to use. I love the whole one-handed use. It has pretty good haptic feedback too, as far as the typing experience. So if you want a good typing experience, if you want a nice little phone to use, you want something to avail yourself of all the great pixel stuff that goes along with the pixel software experience, long longevity, long life, long support, low price. And Hey, if MKBHD says that it's the best overall smartphone camera of 2022, they're doing a lot of things right here. And it's a fantastic camera. So that's all I got. Definitely to me, the best budget, best value phone of 2022. And going in 2023, we'll see what happens once we get around the 7A. But I've, I've been very happy with the 6A. So that's all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, please go out in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you bought one, I'd love to hear some feedback from you. Are you happy with it? Is it everything you thought it would be? Have you been disappointed with it? Do you think that it was a, a big upgrade over the previous A-series phones? Or your, even, even your previous phone? Let's talk about it. So if you like the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button. And the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And also, things are getting better over here. Hopefully next couple of days I don't have to wear these glasses anymore because of my eye injury. But... Things are on the mend. I hope you had a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, all the other possible holidays that are out there. I hope you had a wonderful time. Important things. Spend time with your family. Take some time off. Rest, relax, and enjoy yourself and enjoy time with your loved ones. So that's all I got. As always, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for your support and all that you do. I'll see you guys next time.